everybody, Chris Grandy, planwithchris.com, chrisgrandy.com. Just wanted to share some thoughts about this morning and the market. I think, and this is interesting, I think the market has finally woken up, and they're a little slow to this. Um, usually, some parts of the market are quicker than others, but I believe that the market, enough people are starting to realize that the Fed is going to cut rates. And we kind of knew, some of us thought this is, this was a pretty good thesis that, you know, that, that the Fed mentioned they would stop raising rates and the market rallied. But, you know, there was some structural weakness and cyclical uh, slowdown of demand and some such things like autos and, and certain um, semiconductor chips and things like that. You know, the cyclical stuff that kind of leads, um, you know, economic uh, activity. And so when they said they were not going to hike rates, we had a, a rally. But, you know, the thesis was maybe that wouldn't get too far um, because there's a lot of other problems. What's happened now, though, is with the trade tensions, I think we've kind of accelerated what might have been coming anyway. I mean, look, you might blame this, this correction on the trade tensions, and I'm sure a lot of people used it as an excuse to sell. But the truth is, before that, you know, auto sales were slowing down. And there were enough companies in the semiconductor space, you know, because those things go into everything, right? We have everything smart now, everything's connected. So there's a chip in everything, you know, there's probably a chip in your, uh, I don't know, in, in, your, in your morning breakfast, you know, there's a chip in everything. So if some of, if a lot of them are saying there's a slowdown, you know, a few of them are always talking rosy, oh, second half rebound, stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, a lot of them are pretty straightforward saying, you know, things were slowing down a bit. So if you had that going on already, even though you could blame the trade for the recent sell-off, there's a possibility that you know it's just advanced um, action for what was going to happen anyway. So back to my point, I think the market because and I'll, and I'll show you, I know I'll share with you. Yeah. So first off, you have euro dollars. Euro dollars are what a dollar-denominated deposit pays in interest anywhere around the world. It used to be just focused in Europe, but it's it's anything. So if you have um, a bond denominated in dollars, meaning you know it, it reflects the the performance of the dollar. It's not in a different currency, but it's held overseas. That's a euro dollar rate, and that rate has been falling. You know, euro dollars have been rising, meaning that the spread of you know U.S. interest rates versus rest of the world has been slowly shrinking since since January. Um, so I think that I think that market has kind of foreseen a, a Fed cut of some kind. You have, you know, about a few weeks ago or, you know, about a month or so ago, you had bonds start a rally and then they really broke out relatively recently. So long bonds and um, which means when bonds are going up, it means the rates are falling. So the bond market also is kind of pricing in a Fed rate cut. Today, when you had, uh, it's Friday, you had the markets down pretty good. The U.S. markets, you know, they started down over a percent on the S&P 500, so down more than 1% in the morning. It's a pretty good drop, at least these days it is. And um, But you had uh, emerging markets actually holding up. You had emerging market stocks that were barely down. They're actually, even with the S&P still down 1% right now at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 Pacific, you have emerging markets are actually up today. The index. I know Mexico's down, China's down, but the whole index of emerging markets index is up today. Which usually, you know, when the dollar gets weaker, you know, when interest rates fall, dollar gets weaker, emerging markets do better. So there's another potential indicator. Then you have certain currencies. So for example, the South African Rand, which is not a stable currency for the most part, but it is commodity linked and um, it's somewhat of an emerging market, I guess. Uh, but not really. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't consider them that, but. <clears throat> um, you had the RAND, which was spiking the other day. They were, they were going to reduce the, the number of South Af the the, um, the weighting of South African stocks in certain indices, which means that those stocks were going to get sold off. And that, that was part of, I think, what made the RAND drop in value versus the dollar. The RAND is the South African currency. And then you had that continue to move up. You had the dollar continuing to move up against the RAND. But then last night, you had it just collapse back down. And I think possibly for a couple of reasons, maybe the, you know, the currency markets, except for the peso this morning, because the, the news is so recent with Trump in Mexico, that was just, you know, last night. But except for that, I think you may have, you know, when, when the dollar, when interest rates are going to be cut and the dollar falling, obviously foreign currencies 
go up against it. And South Africa produces a lot of platinum and some other precious metals. So they have that kind of hedge against a uh, dollar falling and in interest rates also. So um, in those situations, I think what we have is another indicator that the market thinks we're going to be cutting rates. And then finally, you know, the, the S just, there's other things too, but with the S&P 500 coming off the lows, actually trying to find some support. And again, that could be what happened anyway, but if the stock traders, uh, you know, they're usually not the smartest group in the house. You know, it's usually the bond, bond people are considered a little more thoughtful and smarter. Currency people, you know, currency people are throwing around trillions of dollars. They have to be smart and they have to be cautious and they have to be, you know, somewhat forward thinking. Same thing with bond people. Stock investors, they're allowed to be idiots, I think, you know, and uh, you know, especially people don't put, you know, hold them to, you know, the, the, the individual investor doesn't hold their mutual funds at that high of a standard for the most part. And they're starting to with fees, but as far as performance, I mean, you know, people just say, oh, that's what the market does. They accept it. But, you know, currency and bond traders are usually trading for pensions, for governments or whatever. They just can't take, you know, 20% hits and say, oh, that's what the market does. They've just got to be a little bit smarter about it. So it's oftentimes... Uh, wise to see what they're doing. Uh, but for the most part, the S&P is trying to come off the lows. It's getting some strength. And that maybe they're thinking the Fed is going to try to bail them out again with a rate cut. Because every time the Fed cuts, every time the market falls, the Fed doesn't really care about unemployment, in my opinion, or inflation or whatever. They're really looking at the stock market. Because, I mean, really, has the job situation changed in the last two weeks? No, I mean, I mean we're definitely having some, some softness in the stats, uh, which would tell the Fed, hey, okay, it's fine. You're not raising rates anymore. But they're still really low. I mean, interest rates are still tremendously low. I mean, if you can't make money with these rates, um, you know, that should tell you well, there's something really wrong. But I think they would, they would, what they are telling us is they use the stock market as an indicator. If the stock market falls, and in my opinion, if the economy has been so financialized, you know, it's so based on the stock market and such that when the stock market falls, they don't want that. They want the stock market up. That is their leading indicator because they want the wealth effect. They want everybody's stock options flying to buy it to make real estate higher so people can sell those stock options and buy all the crap they buy and boost up real estate prices to ridiculous prices. And just, you know, that's what they need. And they need these companies that wouldn't survive with higher interest rates to stay in business. The only way they survive is because they can borrow at zero to three percent and somehow use their cash flow to keep paying those minimum payments. It's like think of, uh, you know, borrowing fifty thousand dollars on a credit card and just making the minimum payments, you know. Uh, you still have all that debt. You look, okay, the payment's not so big. You know, I got to pay, you know, 80 bucks a month or something or $100 a month to service this debt. No big deal. Uh, but it's still a $50,000 debt for somebody. That's all, you know. And so, you know, in this case, um, you know, I, I think the Fed looks at the financial markets, especially the stock market and how it relates to the bonds and everything. And that's how they stimulate. And so I think that's what we're having this morning. So it wouldn't surprise me if stocks rallied. I, um, the last bit, bit bit on this too is the Fed, the vice chairman of the Fed did come out last night and say that, you know, obviously the numbers are looking a little bit weaker and that, you know, um, easing interest rates is on the table. And that's what they call a trial balloon. I mean, typically if the Fed is thinking something, they'll send one of the people out on some, when they're doing some talk at some random place at some university or some business club, and they'll mention it. And it gets picked up, and if and then they can gauge the response in the uh, in the media and in the market. So if they see kind of a positive response to that, that gives them more of a of an onus that maybe at the next Fed meeting they'll actually mention that uh, you know that they're on a rate watch to cut rates or something like that. So but they'll send someone out on a talk to tr to float a trial balloon to see how the markets take it. So I think a lot of what we're seeing today has to do with rates. And again, looking at I'm just, I'm look, the reason I'm looking over here is I'm looking at quotes going across. But looking at euro dollars, you know, the, the euro dollars flying up. I mean, huge move today. Um, and those, I think, if we had a rate cut, you know, that's a that's a pretty cool, um, uh, you know, thing to watch. And and I'm actually in that trade personally. I don't do euro dollars for clients. I do them for myself. I mean, it's one of the futures markets I trade. But um, so in full disclosure, I do. You know, I am long euro dollars. But um, but the emerging markets are holding up. Um, stocks are trying to rally, you know, we'll see what they do. Um, emerging markets are much cheaper than U.S. stocks, by the way, on a valuation basis. You know, currencies, you're seeing, um, you know, foreign currencies get stronger versus the U.S. Gold's having a pretty good morning, probably the best morning it's had. I mean, gold has been threatening to rise, but it's been very muted. But today, a little bit more, I mean, not a huge explosion, but a, a much bigger move than we've seen over the last couple of weeks. So 
something to think about. It could be the Fed, um, but I remember I've discussed this way in the past. It's our opinion that, in my opinion, that is a thesis I have that the Fed will will come to the rescue, will have a rally, but really, if they come to the rescue, it should tell you that things aren't looking so rosy in the economy. And if ten years of zero percent interest rates doesn't get this thing off the ground, and they got to go back to lowering the rates again, you know, it's in trouble. So I don't know if I would would have any faith in the long term effects of that rally, but. Um, just be careful out there and uh, realize that, uh, you know, a lot of the fireworks you're seeing, if you look past the stock market and other things, I think that the market is expecting a Fed rate cut. So hope that helps you. Have a great Friday. Um, we'll talk soon. And if you have any questions, drop them below. And uh, feel free to visit the website. If you like the video, then like it. Click like. And uh, feel free to subscribe. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.